Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. Ben and Denise here, and we are out in the garden. And you know, it's not always all just carrots, cabbage, and cuteness. There's a whole method behind the madness that she's got going on here. So why don't you tell us about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to talk today about uh, creating an ecosystem. Um, within your garden. Um, you know, we have our garden. We also have a food forest. We're actually talking about turning our main garden into a food forest. But we very intentionally have set about to create an ecosystem uh, within our garden. And I want to talk to you about a few plants that we have specifically selected to help us create this um, system. All right. Right. I wish you could see it right behind you. There's a beautiful little yellow bird with some black markings on him. We have tried to record those guys. They just flitter away. They do. Yes, very quickly. Um, now, an ecosystem is not going to solve every problem in the garden, but it's going to help you in a lot of different ways. Um, so let's go take a look at the first flower. All right, so the first plant we're talking about is borage. And this is evening, um, but earlier I took a video so you could see how many insects are all over this plant. Now, borage is a cousin of comfrey. So borage was intentionally planted. Now, one thing I'm going to say about borage, um, it is uh, an annual, so it's going to die back. However, it seeds itself. So wherever you put it, make sure you want it there because we just planted a couple of plants last year. We have them all over here. We've got some in the corner back there and we've got some even spreading in the food forest. Um, so it will reseed. But this plant, like I stated, is a cousin to comfrey. So one of the main benefits of this is for the pollinators. Not only do bees love this, um, I'm not a fan of wasps, but wasps love it. Moths love it. Um, hoverflies love it. Parasitic wasps love it. This plant is very useful. And one of the great things about this plant is the flower will actually recharge its nectar every few seconds. So a bee will go to one flower, will take the pollen out or, or a hummingbird or a butterfly, mm -hmm. then they'll go to the next flower and then they're able to come back. So this is constantly providing a nectar source for the beneficial insects and the pollinators. Now, another great thing about this, just like comfrey, this um, has a, a, a chop and drop. Um, it's not as, I, I want to say it, it's not as prevalent as comfrey as far as being a dynamic accumulator, but it is a dynamic accumulator. So what that means is those roots are going to bring up the, um, all the nutrients from the soil and they're going to go into their flowers and their stems and their leaves. So if you wanted to, yeah. Speaking of bugs. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you wanted to, you could actually chop and drop this just like you do comfrey. And the root system on this um, is a little more complex than the comfrey. And so it's actually really good for compacted soil. So you could even plant this in places that, um, you know, might be a bare spot, might be areas that are struggling. It, it's really prolific and it doesn't need a whole lot of nutrients to thrive. Uh, so you could plant this in uh, some depleted soil and it will actually grow and provide all of the, all of this for, um, the pollinator. So this is definitely an intentional plant and it's one I highly recommend that you um, implement into your garden. Yeah. So let's go check yeah. out the next one. Well, and you can see the bees are still at it and it's getting evening time. They should be... Well, know, it's past evening time. It's well, past yeah, seven. The, the, the sun's <laughs> down. These bees should be going to bed and they're still working at it because it's it's so good. So yes. that's that's borage or mm -hmm. for snooty town people, it's borage. <laughs> let's go, let's go take out. a look at the next one. All right, so the next one is bee balm. Now, bee balm is part of the mint family, so it is going to spread. Um, bee balm actually spreads underneath the ground, so it's actually really easy to split and propagate. The reason we implemented bee balm um, is, again, for the pollinators and the beneficial insects, and hummingbirds love this stuff. So um, what'll happen is the pollinators will come in and then as it starts to seed, it's going to also bring in the birds to eat those seeds. The birds also eat insects. So it's really great and prolific. It's also medicinal. Um, I won't go into the medicinal properties now. Um, a lot of these plants are also medicinal. So if you want me to get into some of the medicinal properties, just leave us a comment and um, let me know which ones you wanna learn more about. 
but bee balm's a great plant for those pollinators. And what happens, you guys, and, and y'all know we got hit hard last year with squash bugs and bean beetles, mm -hmm. and they were decimating our crops. Now this is only our second year um, in our garden. So we are still developing our garden and trying to create this ecosystem. Um, but we chose plants that would bring in the beneficial insects. So that way when we um, get a squash bug problem or a Mexican bean beetle problem, we'll have those um, insects that will come in um, and start to take out those uh, bad insects, the ones that we don't want. So that's a main advantage to creating this ecosystem. So let's go check out the next one. All right, now another plant that I grow every year. Now this one, because we live in a colder climate in the winter, um, this one I do have to plant every year. Unfortunately, it gets too cold here. The seeds die and the plants die. If you live in a warmer climate though, um, this will come back or actually will um, stay. It can act as a perennial, um, but it's nasturtium and a lot of great benefits to nasturtium. Now nasturtium is edible, um, also very high in vitamin C, but pollinators again love this plant. And a main reason I've planted nasturtiums, especially with our squash, is because squash bugs don't like nasturtium. So this acts as, um, uh, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A buffer. A buffer, exactly. Um, for the squash bugs, they, they don't like it, so they stay away from it. Um, another thing that's great about nasturtium, if you have a slug problem, this is a trap plant. You can actually plant this on the perimeter of your garden. The slugs love it, so they will actually get trapped within the nasturtium. Um, so it, it acts as not only a preventative, um, but it will take care of those, those um the um, slugs like we talked about. Now you want to make sure you do not plant this next to your brassicas uh, because the white butterfly loves <laughs> nasturtium. So uh, it will call in the um, white butterflies, which will create the caterpillars, which are going to eat your brassicas. So just FYI. All right. So the other plant is calendula. This is um, one patch. Now uh, we have had some struggles in the garden this year. Um, one of the main struggles has been the Canadian uh, wildfire smoke that has come in. So uh, this has not spread um, as big as it did last year, um, but it's still here. So we know it's going to reseed. And lo and behold, I found a black locust <laughs> behind it that's growing. Um, but calendula is great. So again, all of these that I'm showing you are going to call in pollinators, which is critical for the ecosystem of your garden, as well as the beneficial insects. Again, calendula is medicinal. Um, but one of the great things about calendula, if you have an aphid issue, you can actually plant calendula next to like your brassicas or any plants that are susceptible to aphids. Aphids love this plant. So you can plant some calendula as a sacrificial plant um, and it will actually trap them just like that nasturtium will trap slugs. Um, so calendula, another great flower. Um, and, and let's go check out the next plant. All right, so the other plant um, that I will always grow is dill. I love the way it smells. Um, and this all in here actually self-seeded. Um, so dill is definitely prolific, but you want dill. Hoverflies love this plant. Parasitic wasps absolutely love this plant, as well as the bees. Um, so it's going to call in um, these beneficial insects like we've talked about. Um, and another point that I forgot to mention on the calendula, um, as well as the bee balm, ladybugs absolutely love the calendula and the bee balm. Um, so they're going to eat those aphids. Um, and this is going to call in those insects as well. And it smells really good. And I just kind of let it self seed. Um, it, you know, it was actually well over there and we've actually got it popping up all over the garden. I'm gonna let it because as I stated, um, the hoverflies and the parasitic wasps absolutely love this plant and I want them in my garden to eat the bad bugs. And if you ever have a chance to travel through the Napa Valley in the wine country, they plant tons of this in the rows between the grapes. I don't know what purpose exactly they have, but the whole fields are yellow with, uh, dill. with the dill. I would imagine it's probably for the, the beneficial insects. I imagine so, it's really pretty.
All right, the other plant is Rudbeckia. A lot of people know this as Black Eyed Susan. Now our flowers are just starting. As I mentioned, we've had that Canadian wildfire smoke. So a lot of our plants have been a little slow to grow and we had a very cold June. So it's just starting to put on flowers. But one of the great things about Rudbeckia, number one, um, just like uh, borage, it can grow in just about any soil. Um, it is very prolific. Um, it's going to cover bare ground very quickly, but the bees really love this plant and so do butterflies. And one of the reasons why is in the center, um, it kind of looks like one plant, but there's actually thousands of little flowers in there that each have pollen. Um, so they're able to get in there and get a lot of pollen. And another thing is the way they grow, um, bees are able to land on the flower really easily. So they really like um, Rudbeckia. Um, again, butterflies love this plant, um, bees love this plant. Um, so it's a really great one to bring in all of those pollinators. Um, as you can see, we've got a pumpkin plant behind us. So the pollinators are coming in once these bloom, they'll be able to go straight here, straight to the squash flowers. So it's a win-win. All right, so as you can probably see, this is a daisy. Now again, um, just like the Rudbeckia, the center of this is not one plant. It's actually hundreds or thousands of flowers that each have pollen. And again, the way this is shaped, bees really like to land on it. Um, so this is one of the favorites of bees as well as butterflies. And another great thing about daisies, um, there's a lot of bad insects that actually don't like this plant. So it can actually prevent just like uh, the nasturtium does with these squash bugs. So we plant daisy um, all around our food forest in the garden. Another great thing about daisy, it will grow in almost any soil. This stuff, is, it's almost like a weed. <laughs> so um, so um, it is really beneficial to have in your garden. It's also medicinal. So again, you're, you're seeing a common thread here. Good for the pollinators, good for the beneficial insects, also medicinal. So these are all like triple duty plants, uh, so to speak. So let's go ahead and do the last plant, which I'm wondering if you can guess which one it is. All right, I'm sure you could guess. Um, we grow comfrey everywhere. Um, comfrey is a great plant. Again, it's going to call in those pollinators. It's also going to call in those beneficial insects. It's medicinal. But again, just like the borage, um, you can actually chop and drop this and use this as a fertilizer. Now this has a long tap root. So this is going to bring up more nutrients than something like the borage will. Um, so all those nutrients, um, you can either uh, basically take these leaves, take this whole stem, chop it, then leave it where you want it to fertilize. Or you can take this and actually make a fertilizer like you saw us do a few weeks ago. Um, you basically make a tea. So we throw in um, our comfrey leaves. Um, we sometimes throw in stinging nettle, rabbit poop, um, some crushed eggshells like you saw. We'll let it steep for three or four weeks. And then we will use that as a fertilizer on our garden. Tomatoes especially love um, comfrey tea. So this is a great plant. Again, um, like I mentioned, it's medicinal. There are a lot of uses for comfrey. We have comfrey growing everywhere and we will never be without it. And that's one of the great things about comfrey. Once you have it, um, you never need to buy it again because you can actually uh, dig up that root, cut it into two inch pieces and plant it wherever you want it. So it is a phenomenal plant and we have root cutting. So if you have need of comfrey, um, you can go to renewedhomestead.com forward slash shop and actually order your comfrey root. We dig it up the same day you order it, so it's as fresh as possible. Um, but these are just, a, uh, you know, these are plants that we will always have. Now, obviously we didn't go over every single one, but these are the main ones that are contributing to our ecosystem. A lot of people will use neem oil. Um, I know neem oil is considered organic. We don't like to use that. And one of the main reasons why is not only that can it get rid of the bad insects, but it can hurt um, the pollinators and the beneficial insects. We don't wanna do that. I would rather plant um, things that are going to bring in all of those good pollinators, like, you know, ladybugs love aphids. So I can bring in a bee bomb, bring in those ladybugs, and then they're gonna come in and eat those aphids for me. So I don't have to use chemicals. I don't have to use sprays. And you'll see there's birds in here during the day. There's all kinds of insects. There's all kinds of pollinators. It's really beautiful to watch. And it's because we have these specific plants that are coming in 
bringing all of these um, great, uh, what do you want to say, great, uh, I want to say insects again, but <laughs> great <laughs> flying bugs in. <laughs> Our, our little our little army of uh, of garden workers. There you go, our, our army garden workers. There you go, exactly. All right, and one last thing I wanted to mention. So um, we have crabgrass here. The stuff is awful. It it grows so quickly, and it's it's just an awful weed. And you have to actually, we use our hori hori knife to dig it up, which you can also get at renewedhomestead.com uh, uh, forward slash shop. Uh, great knife. We use it for our weeding, but one thing I'm trying to do is actually create a ground cover. And that ground cover is clover in the garden. So this is gonna do multiple things. One, it's gonna act as a living mulch, um, which will hold in moisture and nutrients. Um, it's going to stop the weeds. Um, it's going to bring in, again, pollinators because bees absolutely love clover. Um, but it's also a nitrogen fixer. So it's going to take that nitrogen and put it right back into our soil for a garden. We're doing this in the food forest with strawberries as well as clover. Um, so this is just something that you can do um, to help you prevent weeds. Clover is a little slower growing. Um, so we've, we've got some growing. Um, it's not growing as fast as I would like, but we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, but just another uh, benefit that you can do, a ground cover, uh, can do a lot of things for you and depending on which one you choose it can be edible um, or it can be a nitrogen fixer all right well as the sun is setting on us quickly um, you know a lot of these flowers there's a lot more in here than what we covered but and i mean we've got lavender behind us and many others but you know each season we're hoping that they reseed themselves you know we don't want to have to plant these every year if we just let them grow naturally and if they come up where we don't want them well you know what Look at a whole food forest so we can transplant them or, you know, we can feed them to the rabbits, you know, any, nothing goes to waste here. And if well, it's, and that's it. The borage just seeds where it wants. And, exactly. Um, you know, and, and really the reason we chose a lot of these was because they are hardy and they do come back year after year. The only one I have to replant is nasturtium. Yeah. So that was a, and, and sometimes a calendula. Yeah. And, and this season, you know, if we get any more of those polar vortexes, we're going to try covering things up a little bit more or they're probably not straw that's a whole different yeah we'll, ha we'll have to get into that yeah on another video yes but we're going to try to preserve them a little better our uh rosemary was doing really good in that polar vortex polar vortex just yeah, well negative 24 not a whole lot <laughs> you know? even though the bee balm and the borage and the comfrey yeah. all survived they did and the daisies all survived yeah. negative 24 yes they did so Anyway, well, uh, like she said, if, if there's any of these that you want more details on, especially on the medicinal side of them, let us know in the comments, and she can do another video specifically to those. And, mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, yeah, let us know if you're doing anything like this, or are you all just uh, carrots, cabbage, and cuteness? <laughs> carrots, cabbage, and cuteness. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Poet and sort of know it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, yeah, but, but right, the well. main thing is, y'all, just create an environment that brings in the good bugs that you want, as well as those pollinators, and it will help you get rid of the things that you don't want. Yeah. So, so you know, like she said, go make sure you go over to the renewedhomestead.com forward slash shop. Get your deodorant, your comfrey root, your hoary hoary knives, and your rooting hormone. And make sure you hit it, give us a thumbs up. If you learned something, if you didn't learn something, make sure you give us a thumbs up anyway. <laughs> and in that case, you got to subscribe too yes. and share it with a friend. <laughs> so. All right. Well, Loki wants his dinner, so we better get inside. <laughs> Thank, uh, we, we do appreciate you guys. Please uh, pray for us. We're praying for you. Take care. God bless. We'll see you all in the next video. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.